Who was Eshu, the trickster god in the Yoruba pantheon? Eshu, sometimes spelled E-S-H-U or E-S-C-H-U, is also known as Elegba, Elegbara, Shigidi, and other names in the diaspora such as Papaleba in uh, Haiti. He is hailed as the Orisha with 200 names because of his complex and diverse characteristics. Primarily, he is the strict star god of the Yoruba pantheon. Despite being a trickster, he is believed to be extremely intelligent, protective, and benevolent. He serves Orumila, also known as Ifa, by transmitting messages between heaven and earth, as well as conveying sacrifices to the gods from the earth. Please watch our episode on Orumila to know more about how Ifa divination works. Eshu is also the god who is responsible for punishing humans on behalf of the other gods when humans have been wicked. This is probably why Eshu is misunderstood and maligned as Satan or, 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 or the devil in the Abrahamic religions like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These religions conflict Eshu with Satan or the devil, whereas the Yoruba tradition does not believe in the existence of any God that correlates with Satan, whose only purpose is to seduce humans into sin or falsehood. Unfortunately, some of these misconceptions have also found their way into some Yoruba traditional beliefs and practices. While Eshu in his capacity as a trickster, can tempt the weak to do evil and as Elegbara or Eshushigidi serves as the avenger who settles scores on behalf of all the Orisha, he is way more complex than Satan or devil. In Yoruba tradition, Eshu serves as mediator between the benevolent and malevolent values of human conscience. Eshu is also referred to as Onileorita, keeper of the crossroads, because crossroads are a form of spiritual location that signify the point that humans reach when they are confronted with difficult decisions in life. In Yoruba tradition, crossroads mean more than the physical points at which roads cross one another and which is where sacrifices are taken to issue in order to seek his help. Crossroads are believed to be sites that offer access to various opportunities and choices. And Eshu is the deity who is believed to hold the spiritual potential to bring about change in people's circumstances by pointing them in the right direction when they are at crossroads. There are several Odu, Ifa, which pay homage to Eshu's varied characteristics, just as there are several traditional stories that feature how Eshu became the most valuable companion and messenger of Onrumila, the god of divination. A very popular one that reflects Eshu's character relates how Iku, death in Yoruba, challenged Eshu to a combat to determine which of them was greater. Unlike everyone who feared Iku, Eshu was not flustered by this challenge. Even Orumila tried to warn Eshu, asking him, have you ever heard of anyone who challenged death and survived? But Eshu would not listen. He insisted that he was not scared of death. So, on the day of the duel, Eshu went to the market uh, square, which was this venue of the combat, with a large retinue of singers and drummers to intimidate death. But death was equally prepared 
because he too came with a, an equally large group of drummers and dancers. Everyone who had heard about the challenge showed up at the market square to, um, to watch who would win between Ishu and Iku. Some of the spectators hoped that Ishu would put an end to death tyranny, while others believed that Iku would surely destroy Ishu. The two groups of singers and drummers opened the floor by singing and taunting their opponents. Finally, Orumila Agbonirigun, who had been chosen to play the role of umpire because of his unmatched wisdom, called for the battle to begin. Ishu sprang forward, holding up his big fighting club. He held it high and aimed it at Iku. Although the club was so powerful, Iku ducked. Ishu raised his club and struck again and again, and Iku, who was so agile, kept prancing about and ducking. Dust rose from the earth, and the air became thick as the two fighters kept prancing around with Ishu striking out and Iku managing to avoid getting hit by Ishu's mighty club. Ishu finally decided to muster all his strength and targeted Iku's head to break it once and for all and destroy him. But Ishu lost hold of the club and it fell with a loud thud to the ground, making a sound as loud as thunder when it landed. There was a sudden hush as spectators on both sides watched. Iku grabbed hold of Ishu and flung him to the ground, trying to pin his back to the ground. The two wrestled on the ground, and in one swift movement, Iku managed to grab Ishu's club, which both of them had been trying to reach. He raised it and was about to bring it down on Ishu when Orumila caught Iku's hand and stopped him before he could bring the club down and hit Ishu. The club dropped again, and this time Orumila quickly picked it up before either of them um, could snatch it. He called for a truce. Being the sage that he was, Onumila pointed out to Iku that he should be quite satisfied with his victory in winning the battle against Ishu. He also turned to Ishu and pointed out to him that although he had lost the battle, he had also won the honor of living on after being defeated by death, unlike all other creatures who on encountering death always end up dying. Now, beyond the realm of religion, Ishu's many attributes have been drawn on by artists for inspiration and by scholars in various fields to interpret all forms of creative work. I recommend Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s innovative study, which explores the relationship between African and African-American uh, literature in the diaspora by tracing connections between Ishu and other trickster figures in a lot of cultures in the diaspora, especially the signifying monkey. Gates' book, titled The Signifying Monkey, A Theory of African-American Literary Criticism, uncovers a unique system for appraising and interpreting creative works and proposes new critical approaches to understanding them based on traditions that enslaved people brought with them to the new world and which their descendants have retained even after hundreds of years. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe if you've not yet done so. Turn on your notification buttons and don't forget to share our videos with all your contacts and keep those comments coming.